please give Sean a warm welcome. How does that I just next it. All right, just get familiar with the controls. Hello, everyone. My name's Sean Jordan. Um, I'm the VP, Vice President of uh, Europe at Fandom. Working for an American company, you always get a really, really poor American title. Um, but uh, it's uh, one of those today where I'm going to talk to you about our latest research that we've done. It's an annual study that we do, and uh, it's basically called Inside Fandom. Um, we've done this over a number of years. Uh, historically, we've looked at the franchise factor, the life cycle of a fan, and what we really do, using the first party data that we've got on our site, a lot of the behavioral data, along with our ability to survey the audience that we've got, we really drill down and get some real good niche insights that allow advertisers to actually activate on that. So those in insights are purely there to try and allow them to, uh, to activate. Um, a lot of you probably won't be necessarily familiar with fandom, so I just want to give you a very, very quick um, overview of what we are. We're a global entertainment platform. We reach 350 million unique users a month. And uh, whether they're looking for news or information, we've got the 250,000 wikis um, that sit within fandom, along with GameSpot that allow them to access all this information. If it's reviews um, and ratings that they're looking for, we've got Metacritic. And then on the other end of the spectrum as well, we've got Fanatical, which is an e-commerce platform. So from that perspective, um, there's quite a lot that sits within the, within the umbrella. And, and as a business, we really do see ourselves as the, the fans' companion when they're looking for any information or looking to buy something within this space. You heard YouTube talk earlier about, in terms of their the sidekick, similar kind of thing. We're always there, always supporting those fans. And those fans come to us via search. A lot of the audience is basically people looking for more information, more insights, trying to understand what's happening in a particular franchise, and that's how they get to us. And for us, that's quite unique, because if you look at a lot of the businesses in digital over the last 10 to 15 years, they've really come to prominence through social. So in that respect, we are owned and operated, which is good, because our audience moves depending on those big launches and those big franchises that are prominent in market at a particular time. So in terms of that tug of war between entertainment and gaming, there's a hell of a lot been written in the space. And if you look on a launch weekend of a film, June 2 recently that's, that's just come to the cinema, we'll probably do around 250, 300 million at the box office. You look at something like Call of Duty on Activision, when they do a launch weekend, they will deliver $650 million globally. So a big, big uptick. And then again, you might not have heard of fandom, but you will have heard of Fortnite across a month selling skins just within that product. They will deliver potentially around a billion dollars. So there's huge amounts of money in this space. There's huge amounts of caches around there. And probably no surprise on the back of it that you're then getting a lot of these press businesses out there writing big, big articles talking about the dominance of gaming and being in that particular space. And what we want to do today with the research that I'm just going to drill into on, on a very top line level, there's a lot of slides within this, but today I've picked a few of the, the key ones out, is really look at how potentially advertisers should show up in that gaming space and what they should be doing. Because I think just turning up and plastering ads over, over the various sites is probably not the best way forward. So when you look at it, is it a myth? Are people really deserting entertainment, movies, TV? and spending all their time gaming. And as you can see from this chart here, that's not entirely the case. A little bit blurred there that basically what it's saying is two thirds of the audience are still staying with entertainment. They're still engaged with that. They're still consuming a lot of these streaming platforms and watching a lot of movies out there. But a third of the audience is actually moving away and doing other things. And today, I'm going to look at those. I'm going to call them switches, but I just want to look at what they're doing when they actually move away from the traditional entertainment they've probably been uh, used to. And as you can see from here, the main key activity that they're getting involved in is actually playing games, video games. So not a massive surprise there when we talk about how people moving away from the entertainment space into gaming are now starting to get more involved in that space. And, and quite a lot of them there, totally um, um, in the space. But what I want to look at now 
is the fact that there is an opportunity here with that audience, the fact they've moved away, are they actually just doing gaming or are they doing other things as well? And can we create a strategy around that for advertisers to properly lean in? So the first thing I want to look at over the next few slides is that emotional connection of entertainment and gaming. And is there a correlation? Are these two related in any way on what's happening? And when we surveyed our audience on the side, one of the key things that came back, and this was a quote from a young male on there, at the end of the day, I watch a whole lot of TV and game a ton. It just depends on my mood. And I think that's a real, real key point in the whole of this in terms of when we're looking at it. And I think it's the same with anything. Look at yourselves in terms of what you do. A lot of it is driven by the mood that you're in. So what we did, we surveyed a lot of the site. And basically, with all the emotions that they had, we bucketed them into three areas, rewards, excitement, and reflection. And as you can see from this chart, reward and excitement index really, really high from the gaming perspective. From a reflection side of things, it's a slightly different scenario, and that's where entertainment really kicks in. And on this next slide, what I want to do is just look at those rewards and excitement. Gaming, you really lean in. You're really focused on what you're doing. Your total attention is on the screen, trying to get to the next level in terms of accomplishing a different level, a challenge within that, the adrenaline rush of being involved, obviously doing that with your friends as well, is something that's really, really key. So probably no surprise that the accomplishment side of it is double that than what you get on the TV side of things. Again, when you look at gaming, 33% more, li more likely to be engaged and focused, talking about that full attention in the moment around what you're doing. Whereas then, if you actually look at the entertainment side of things, it does lend itself more to reflection. Just think about yourselves in terms of what you do when you're watching TV or you're watching a movie. You're leaning back. You're probably having a drink. You might even be dual screening. But the whole experience is a very different experience than what you get when you're actually in that gaming space. And these people are more, more likely to experience sadness. I presume it's a sad film in terms of what they're watching. Whereas in the gaming, it's more euphoria and excitement that's involved. And again, that feeling of serenity, all part of that whole experience when you're watching movies and TV. So what you can see here is with those different moods and the swings in those different moods, again, you start to get a bit of a tug of war in terms of what people are doing and when they're doing it. So what I wanted to do now is really look at the fact of when people um, are watching movies or TV, when they actually do it and when they're properly leaning in in terms of to, to get involved in this space. So um, in the space, what they end up actually doing is there's certain IPs that uh, people are really, really familiar with and they really, really lean into. And when you look at gaming, you probably think that it's action and adventure all the time that they're really going to be interested in and it's going to really lend itself to the gaming area. Same with sci-fi. But what we've learned within this as well, drama is also playing a really big part, but it's a different type of game in terms of what people are getting involved in. So when you look at the top five genres that are associated with drama, looking at the cross-visitation on our site, role-playing is 73% key in terms of link to that. Again, when you look at those that index really, really high in certain games that link to drama, sports is up there high. Um, uh, multi-online battle arena in terms of things like League of Legends also does really, really well from a performance perspective there. So it's really key here to understand what the different genres, what the different IPs link to, and how they then can be linked back in terms of what you're doing in that actual gaming space and what you're looking to target. So what we did here, and, and we drilled down, and I could have used Star Wars, I could have used Marvel, one of these really sort of big, big franchises that are out there, but we wanted to look at Euphoria. And what we did here is, this is a teen age drama, quite dark, quite edgy, and what we wanted to do is to drill down into that, and from the cross-visitation initially, look at what was associated with that. And within that, a number of games came out of that that were associated with the actual program. 
Um, in terms of then what we did, we used AI to look at the emotions that were linked in all of those games. And as you can see on the left-hand side, there's a number of things that come out. Obviously, the bolder is more how um, the, the weighting of that within those actual games. So you've got the coming of age, you've got decision making, you've got the psychological side, you've got horror as well. And all of these emotions are also the building blocks of euphoria. So for us as a business now, what we're doing is we're going back to advertisers to say, you've really got to understand what your product is in that entertainment space and how it leans into these different areas. And then on the back of that, actually building a strategy that really leans in, that's laser focused around exactly who you're trying to target and then linking back to it. So again, hopefully this gives you a bit of idea in terms of the data, the, map, the analytics that we've got on Fandom and how we can really drill down into that to really create a precise strategy um, around what you're doing. Um, so in terms of today, you know, the whole idea with Fandom is what we try and do is give people real, real good insights. We really use the analytics and data at our disposal. And then what it does, it makes it a lot clearer for those advertisers and agencies where they want to lean in and how they want to lean in. And then on the back of that, it really gives them the opportunity to get the messaging right, not just from the targeting side of things, but also on the creative side as well. So in terms of today, the main thing really that I want us to, to take away from this, and there's three things really that are, that are key here. When getting involved in this space and the tug of war between gaming and, and entertainment, emotions are involved. And the emotional state of people is really, really key as to how they feel and what controller they're likely to pick up when they're in the actual mood of, of what they're doing. And then that determines what screen they end up in front of. The other thing is that entertainment is a switcher activity. So people are going to switch from one to the other. They're not necessarily just going to sit in one. Think of yourselves. If you eat steak and chips all the time, after a while, you're going to want to switch and eat something else. So it's when they've got their fill of something, it's then how they switch back in. And it's understanding that if you're an entertainment brand or a gaming brand and how you make use of that and that correlation, uh, correlation and targeting accordingly. And then with all of that information, it's developing that gaming strategy that's key for you. So they're the three things that I think I'd love you to take away from this. That was a very whistle-stop tour around what we've got in that data space. Um, I don't know if I was talking too quickly and whistled through it very, very fast, um, but hopefully it gives you a bit of an overview. The actual insight there, there's a lot more slides, a lot more charts around it. And from our perspective, I think we touched on earlier in terms of the media formats that people are using. On Fandom, what we do is try and integrate the advertising into the fabric of the page. So there's a lot of pages on Fandom where you're just the only advertiser and it's really woven into the fabric, which makes it look seamless with the content, which is really, really positive for us and really positive for the advertisers. Because the last thing you want is just landing in the space and then looking out of place. So we go to a lot of work to get the targeting right, but then obviously do a lot of work as well to ensure that the media looks right within that. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a whistle-stop tour of roughly what fandom's about, what we can do in that analytics space. And again, if there's any questions, please shout out. <laughs>